going to prison because I had been in the Black Panther Party. I wasn't going to prison because I had made a mistake. I was on my way to prison because of my choices. And it would have been, and still today it would be inauthentic of me to tell you that I was in prison because of America's broken criminal justice system. Everybody knows that story. Everybody's heard that script. Yes, we know it's broken. The fundamental question that I want to ask is, but how are you complicitous in it? How have you put yourself at greater, in, in greater harm, in the area of space of greater harm for your own life and your children's life and your community with the choices that you're making? If America is a criminal state, it has a criminal existence, why would I then become a criminal? If I say I challenge the injustice of it, why would I then become the very thing that I'm indicting? That was my, that was so clear to me. And so I looked at the judge and I said, thank you. Now I'm faced with what to do with this sentence, 75-year maximum. When you say I went on to earn my bachelor's and master's degree, I was in the same prison that Malcolm Little became Malcolm X, Norfolk Prison Colony. I earned my master's degree from Boston University where Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. earned his doctorate degree. I was crystal clear of the historic and existential significance of my being in prison in that moment in that specific space and the responsibility that I had to do something significant with it. Above all, to not take the cowardice route of not being able to see my own shadow. To not take the cowardice route of, not, of, of saying that it was everyone else and everything else but me that's responsible for my condition. By owning it, here's what I did. I released myself. I gave myself permission to use my power in a different way. You see, none of my work is about empowerment. What I say fundamentally, and I know this, people already have power. The existential question for each of us is, how are we using the power that we have? How are you using it? And is every moment that you have a challenge or difficulty or crisis, are you aware of it as an opportunity? So I sit in prison, and now here's what I realized. I actually realized I was incarcerated before I was arrested. Imagine that. You're in your worst moment of your life, and you realize there have been red flags all along the way. I was incarcerated before I was arrested. But my epiphany was that I could get out before I was released. You know why? Because the source of the incarceration wasn't the cell or the prison or the arresting officers or the sentencing judge. The source of my incarceration was me. And so I had a simple philosophy in prison, turn the cell into a classroom and the prison into a university. And while I was there, I was reading about Nelson Mandela and was deeply inspired had many, for many years since my uh, conscientizing, being conscientized of the Black Panther Party, we knew of Nelson Mandela. So I... His daughter was attending UMass Amherst, University of Massachusetts Amherst, which is in the same state that I'm, I was incarcerated. So I said, I'm going to write her. I, I just wrote the register. The guys in prison, other prisoners said to me, oh, Cyrus, so like, um, do you know that that woman is going to see it's coming from an inmate? I'm saying, I'm thinking now, her father's in prison. I'm thinking that might be a favorable <laughs> thing for me. <laughs> So she had been all over America to the White House and everything. I had sent her on my opening line as, was in the letter, I'd like to invite you to the Black House. <laughs> the only place in America where blacks are a majority. <laughs> I can say it with humor because I understand that if you turn the cell into a classroom and the prison into a university, that institution will be forever transformed. And the people coming out of there, you'll be liberating minds to free more people. So we became pen pals, Makazewi Mandela and I. And in 1986, I made a commitment to her and her father, who was at Poolsmore at the time, Poolsmore Prison, that I would come to South Africa once released and successful in America, from, re released from prison, and work in schools and prisons to honor the impact he had on me and many others like me at the bottom of life in America. 
Well, Mandela, Madiba got out before me, 1990. I got out in March 1st, 1999. I'd served 20 years. I was 40 years old. I can tell you that not much was thought about what was going to be possible for me in that moment. And you hear all the stories. Now, you know all those stories about the negative narrative. No one's going to give you a job. They won't hire you. You're an ex-felon. You're a criminal. You're a you, know the, you know the story. Here's what I said to myself. I'm like, this is, this is, this is the challenge I, I need. Here's what it's going to look like. I'm going to spend the next 20 years with my head just really clear about what my purpose is. And I'm going to live my purpose. Now, I, was, I already didn't have any money, so it didn't matter about being broke or all that kind of thing. But actually, I was convinced I was rich. <laughs> it's not just money. It's quality of thought and life, which you can create under the most difficult circumstances. And I had been doing that. And so I went and said, I'm not going to ask someone to hire me. I'm going to go and volunteer somewhere where they're doing work I believe in. 